Okay, well, I'm Steve Melton, and I'm a co-leader of the Kansas City chapter of Citizens Climate Lobby. Uh, I was born and raised in California, and then joined the military, spent 27 years in the Army, uh, and then taught it for 12 years at the Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and stayed here in the area after I retired. I now live in Parkville, California with my wife. I joined um, Citizens Climate Lobby after I retired from the Army. In the Army, you've got to be non-political. And so I never really worked for any political causes while I was in the military. I taught a course when I was at the Command and General Staff College on the future of warfare. And one of the things that we discussed in the seminar was environmental impacts and the effect of global warming, climate change, on national security and how it would um, I impact the national security policy of the United States and other nations in the world uh, in the 2030 time frame, so about 10 years from now. I've always been interested in the subject of uh, climate. I've never been a climate denier. I've been tracking this issue since the 1990s when it first uh, you know, came to my attention. Uh, and I've always felt that the scientists' predictions are accurate and they prove to be accurate over time. So how did I come into Citizens Climate Lobby? Well, there, it was three years ago on Earth Day, uh, but there was a big exhibit. All kinds of uh, environmental causes were there tabling, and I ran into Dave Mitchell, who's the co-leader, my fellow co-leader in Citizens Climate Lobby, and talked to him. and. Uh, I instantly was attracted to Citizens Climate Lobby and their solution of carbon fee and dividend uh, as being uh, my entry point and my, uh, my proper home in, in the climate movement. So I've been working with Citizens Climate Lobby ever since and became a co-leader in Citizens Climate Lobby of, of the local chapter of, about a year ago. You know, we, we do a lot of work in Citizens Climate Lobby. We go around and talk to the politicians, um, you know, at the federal level. We talk to local politicians. We talk to businesses. Uh, we table at events and talk to people in, at, at, a, at a whole host of events, go to churches and talk to people in churches. And the, the big thing that we talk to them about is this year is House Resolution 763, which is a bill in front of Congress right now with 79 co-sponsors to enact a nationwide carbon fee and dividend program. And our own Representative Emanuel Cleaver II is a co-sponsor of H.R. 763. And so we're very happy that he's done that. And what H.R. 763 basically does is it puts a fee on carbon emissions. Uh, it, it puts a fee on coal, natural gas, and petroleum at the wellhead, at the coal mine. And the fee is based on how many tons of CO2 will be emitted by that fossil fuel when it's burned. And the fee starts low. Uh, and then goes up every year after that. And so the, the fee starts low and becomes uh, fairly high uh, over the next 30 years. And it, the fee, uh, the, the money from the fees all, all go back to the American people. So the government doesn't keep any of this money that's collected. It's all distributed. Uh, one share per adult over 18 and one half share for each child under 18. So the money goes right back to American families. Now, so what that, what that does in effect is very complicated, it sounds very complicated, but what it does is actually very simple, is it rewards people who reduce their carbon footprint at the expense of people who don't reduce their carbon footprint. So it incentivizes people to reduce their use of fossil fuel and penalizes people who don't reduce their use of fossil fuel. And it, it isn't, doesn't just pertain to people, it pertains to businesses too. The assumption is 
is that all the increase in petroleum prices and coal prices will be passed you know, through to the businesses who use them will be embedded in higher costs for the products of, you know, the, the things that these businesses create. For businesses' perspective, and businesses are very cost aversive, they are incentivized to invest in new plant and equipment and new processes to lower their carbon footprint uh, immediately. If you're firm A and you make a product and you have a high carbon footprint, and there's firm B who makes the same product and has a low carbon footprint, then firm B is gonna get the market from you. They're gonna be able to undersell you in the market and they're gonna make more profits. So all the corporations and companies in America will be incentivized to lower their carbon footprints rapidly uh, to maintain and expand their markets. And then people will be incentivized um, the same way to l lower their carbon footprint and the purchases they make. So, you know, they'll buy electric cars instead of gasoline cars. So they'll buy an economy car, you know, instead of a, a big gas guzzler. You know, everybody knowing that the price of fossil fuels is going to go up is going to be incentivized to lower their use of fossil fuels and their exposure to those increased prices. Now, the so people with low carbon footprint will be rewarded. So who do these people generally look like? Well, poor people have the lowest carbon footprints in, in, in the country. Um, you know, they buy less, they live in smaller buildings, they don't commute uh, as much. So, so almost all of the poorest people in the country will benefit by carbon fee and dividend. And middle class people will generally benefit from carbon fee and dividend. About 60% of the families will benefit from carbon fee and dividend. They will pay, get more in terms of dividends than they have to pay in increased costs for what they buy. Who is going to lose under this? Well, it's going to be the richest people. <laughs> the richest people by far have the largest carbon uh, footprint. Um, you know, they take more trips, they drive bigger cars, they live in huge houses, they buy a lot of stuff. You know, their carbon footprint is large. And they will be the losers in all this in terms of that they will pay more in higher costs than they get in the dividend. But then again, they're also, because they're the richest 20%, they have the money to invest in lowering their carbon footprint. I mean, they can afford to go out and buy the electric car. They can go out and afford to, um, you know, uh, do the things necessary to lower their carbon footprint. So it works out well for everybody. It, you know, the, the people who are at the bottom end of the economic spectrum will make a profit on the thing, and the people at the upper end will be incentivized to reduce their carbon footprint and have the money available to do that. We think and all the studies show that we, a carbon fee and dividend program like HR 763 will reduce carbon emissions in the United States by 40% in 12 years, 50% within 15 years. So that gets us on the glide path to meet our Paris commitments of being carbon neutral by about mid-century. So the, the bill was introduced about a year ago, and now, like I said, has 79 co-sponsors. We don't expect the bill to pass this year. We think that next year will be a tremendous window of opportunity uh, to get a bill like this passed and to get uh, people uh, getting their refund checks. Once they start to see these refund checks come in every mm -hmm. month, then it builds a constituency to keep it going. And, and that, that's very important, uh, very important. Now, they, ha they have this in Canada. They started it last year. And it was a bill that was written, really, by Citizens Climate Lobby in Canada. Uh, it's very similar to the bill that we're pushing for the United States. And uh, people get their monthly checks. And the price of fuel is going up. You know, the price of a lot of things is drifting up, not as much as you'd expect. And people like to get the dividend checks. And, and the conservative 
party up there in Canada is running against uh, these carbon fees, but the Liberals won the last election in Canada, and you know, we'll see how they do in the next one. But it seems like these dividend checks are extremely important in, in, in um, maintaining popular will to see this through. You know, when everybody feels that they get a little piece of the action, then everybody feels invested and is willing to make whatever modest sacrifices we need to to move from fossil fuels to sustainable energy.